Hi, this is Sherry Ann Richardson from ExperimentalHomesteader.com, and what we're going to be talking about today is Theobroma cacao. This is the pod that the chocolate seeds come out of, where uh, you make chocolate out of them. So uh, I have a couple of the little trees here that I acquired and have been growing in my greenhouse. Now I'm going to show you a couple things about these. First of all, this lighter colored leaf is a new leaf. So it has just started to uh, unroll and grow. And the brown on the tips of these leaves is from not high enough humidity. Now that's not a big deal because you can mist it to raise that humidity. Um, but even if the tips of the tree stay a little bit brown, it's not going to hurt the tree. It's just going to have brown tips. Um, Theobroma cacao is actually an understory tree. It grows in the rainforest. So it really likes the flood drain, flood drain cycle. And being an understory tree, that also means that it is accustomed to having shade. It doesn't like to grow in the sun. Growing uh, theobroma in the sun actually causes it to become diseased and the trees die, die off. Um, because some of the cacao farmers tried that to increase their production of chocolate. And what they ended up with was a bunch of trees that just didn't make it um, because they didn't adapt. So these are really easy to grow in the house and they make a fantastic house plant. They will bloom. Uh, mine was about three feet tall and I think about four or five years old when it bloomed. We had gone away, um, it was August, and we locked up the house and I made sure my little tree had plenty of water in it and left and when we came back it was actually in bloom. Now that was the first time it had bloomed so I did not get pods. Um, but the tree is actually pollinated by midges, so you would probably have to hand pollinate. Now, I know some of the botanical gardens um, in the area. This is where I actually got this pod uh, from Garfield Park Conservatory, and that's also where I got the little trees this time. Um, their trees do produce pods, and I'm not sure what pollinates the flowers. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you... Uh, small video of their tree and their pods that I took when I was down there uh, picking this up. But the pods actually grow on the trunk and the branches of the tree, which is really interesting. They smell great, by the way. Um, so when I'm done, I dry my pods out and I keep them for the different presentations that I do. So they will keep um, once you dry them. But I do have to keep this away from my pets, especially my dog who would eat it and it is toxic to dogs. Uh, all chocolate is toxic to dogs. So um, anyway, I'm going to show you today how to germinate this. And you always want fresh seeds because once these seeds dry, there's no germinating them because they become chocolate. Whether they're roasted or not, they become chocolate. And um, then I'm also going to talk a little bit about what the process is to take the raw seeds from inside the cacao pod and turn them into chocolate. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to germ I'm going to show you how to germinate these seeds. Okay, so this is the cacao pod. You need a really sharp knife to cut through this because this pod can be very thick and very tough. I like to start towards the center of the pod and just kind of work my way across. I do not get in a hurry with these pods on getting them open. One, because they are so tough and I don't want to accidentally slide the knife off and cut myself. And two, because I don't want to accidentally slice through any of the seeds that are on the inside. So, um, like I said, this can be a pretty thick pod, pretty tough to get through. I know that I have cracked through the outer core. And I'm just kind of prying it because like I said, I don't want, I don't want to uh, cut myself or cut those seeds. Now I'm going to go on over to the other side. I try to save these pods because I find them really 
fascinating and when I do give presentations people like to touch and hold the dried pods so now this is a little area that I had noticed on this pod something had been eating on it and I'm not sure what that was um, but it has kind of started to mold a little bit on me and get kind of yicky okay I have definitely cracked through here I'm going to set the knife down and I'm going to use my hands to pry this open okay now this white stuff inside of here is actually edible and in the countries where Theobroma would normally grow. It's actually a delicacy. I also see that some of the seeds have started to germinate, but I see the tip of that uh, root has also started to dry up. So there's no guarantee that that seed will make it. Um, the seed pods hold between 30 to 50 seeds per pod, depending on the uh, size of the pod. I'm not sure how many was in this one, but there you go. Now, what I do, okay, those are actually germinated. Can you see that A small root coming out? So I'm going to separate the ones that are germinated. There's another one that, oh, wow. Okay, that <laughs> is very interesting because that is the largest uh, theobroma root that I have personally got to see because I normally uh, transplant these into peat pots just as soon as um, there's another one germinated about this size when the roots like this that's when I'm normally transplanting these and I do use peat pots because I have found that transplanting these can be a little bit tricky so you have to really up the humidity and I have been known to put these inside of a plastic baggie and seal it up and create a humidity dome to keep the leaves from falling off um, because we have tried there's another one um, we have tried to get large plants shipped to us and was actually successful once but it is best to ship these in soil um, they they definitely don't like being bare rooted for some reason so and here is oh wow 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 okay we have got a lot of germination going on inside of this pod and look at that root system so uh, wow okay we have definitely got a situation there that I'm gonna have to take a closer look at but these seeds have not germinated yet wait that one has I missed that okay these seeds have not germinated yet so I'm going to show you the technique that I use to germinate these and you need to pay attention when you do this because these can germinate as fast as 24 hours so I take a paper towel fold it in half fold it in half again to get this little little square I'm going to push these out of the way and then what I do is I take a mister bottle and I want this just barely damp. Um, you can mist it before you fold it up if you like. Or you can do what I did, fold it and then mist it. Doesn't matter. You just don't want this dripping wet. And then I take one of these seeds, I put it in here, fold it in half, and then I take a baggie like this and I just I slide this in like that I seal it up and I set this at room temperature and I will put all of these inside of like one of those plastic shoe boxes just to keep them together and make them easy to mark and then like I said as soon as I see the signs of a root and we're talking a tiny root like this then I transplant these into a mixture of peat moss, vermiculite, and perlite. I would say about half would be peat moss, 
a quarter would be vermiculite and a quarter would be perlite. I put them inside of a flat or a saucer just like this. Um, let me turn the camera around so I can show you a little better. Okay, so I use peat pots. Um, like I said, I did get these uh, from Garfield Park Conservatory in Indianapolis. So they use plastic pots. Normally I would use peat pots until I go to a very large size pot. I have also found that the depth of the pot is a lot more important than the width of the pot because these have long roots, I'm guessing. Um, I just know they do better that way. Like I said, this is, this is amazing. This is the first large root that I've got to see and I find it very, very interesting that this is what happens after you see that little nib because I haven't got to see that before. But what I do is I will fill this with water and I will let it drain down. Now with peat pots, you have to be careful because you don't want those to dry out because they will suck the moisture from the roots, which is not what you want to happen. But then I will watch the, let me set this down. I will watch the edges of the pot. And just, when this soil starts to just barely pull away, I'm just dripping every place, guys, uh, sorry. When the soil just barely starts to pull away from the edge of the pot, then I will flood it again. Now, some of you may be thinking that's not the normal way that you would do plants. You would never leave them set in water. And this is true, but you have to remember you are dealing with a rainforest plant with the cacao. And so you want to simulate the natural rainforest conditions. And in the rainforest, you have flooding times and you have uh, dry times. And I'm just missing these roots because I definitely don't want to lose these. Um, so if you're wondering what's going on, that's what's going on. Um, but anyway, like I said, super, super easy to grow. And for those of you that are wondering, well, how do these seeds like this turn into chocolate? Well, the first thing that they would do is, um, and I don't know that they really do this, but this uh, white stuff right here is edible. And so you can take that off and eat it. I don't know that they necessarily take it off before they start the fermentation process. Um, I've never been able to track that information down, but you could if you wanted. Um, I would just leave it on if it was me. They dig a big hole in the ground and they line it with banana leaves and then they put the uh, cacao seeds in and they cover it with banana leaves again and they allow it to ferment. Once the seeds are fermented, then they can send them off or keep them or whatever they're going to do with them. And it's the roasting times and the different types of beans that create your different types of flavor in your chocolate. And then, of course, it's all the other additives because, you know, back in the day, the Aztecs added uh, chili peppers and cinnamon to their chocolate. And that is delicious. If you've never had it, I really encourage you to try it because it gives this wonderful bite to chocolate. Um... I also did not realize the amount of milk and sugar that they actually put in chocolate. I knew that I never liked milk chocolate, um, not even as a child. And when I started learning about chocolate and I started growing it, I found that I actually prefer the 70% dark chocolate. So there are so many things that go into how chocolate tastes, including where it's from. Um, unfortunately, I've never got enough pods here in Indiana to be able to try to make my own chocolate, but it is something that I want to do. Um, I do know it's a process. Normally, they roast the seeds in a big roaster, but you can do it in your oven, and that's how a lot of people in other countries do it. They grow their own chocolate and just have it for their personal use. They roast those seeds themselves, and then they grind them down. And then they add the other additives that they're going to add, like the sugar, the milk, the spices, whatever um, they're going to have to make their chocolate. And that's a process that I definitely want to do one day. Um, it, I think it would be very time consuming, but I also think it would be really fun to be able to say I did that. Um, chocolate is just a very popular item. And as I was researching and learning, and I actually wrote a little ebook on chocolate, um, 
I was amazed to find out how many things that people uh, have that have the chocolate scent. You know, I have a shirt that was sent to me that actually smells just like chocolate. There are chocolate perfumes and just so many different things. I was also really surprised to find out, and I put this in my ebook, and I had a lot of comments uh, on it, but old recipes that I found, they use chocolate in things like eggs, like your morning eggs, your scrambled eggs and stuff. They use chocolate in liver. Now, I have never tried either of those recipes because one, I'm allergic to eggs, and two, I don't like liver, but what I did try, I have used uh, chocolate in some of my spices that I put on like beef and stuff and it really adds a wonderful flavor and don't think of it as a candy bar because it's not it's just the powdered cacao bean put in with all of your other spices and sprinkled on and you truly don't even know it's in there you know there's a deep rich flavor but you can't really pick it out and I have fed it to other people you know and They've asked, and I just don't say what it is because, you know, they're going to say, you did what? <laughs> um, but anyway, if you're in Indiana or near any botanical garden that actually has a Theobroma cacao tree in it, and I think most of them do, um, I, mo everyone I've been to has had one of these trees, find out when it's going to be in bloom and find out when it's going to be in pod and stop in and check it out because it's really, really an amazing tree and it's so fascinating and there is so much history behind it which i'm not going to go into because my presentation can take up to two hours so um i'm trying to just you know keep this a little bit about the germination and i'm really i'm really fascinated by this um the way these have grown together this big big batch and trying to think of how i'm going to separate those without doing any damage to the tree um but i want to leave you with a very brief video of the tree and the flowers that i was able to take again when i was at garfield park conservatory in indianapolis i want to thank them for selling me this pod and these trees um in the past i have always ordered my pods in from puerto rico and it's usually during the winter months um usually december sometimes January, February, and we have to overnight them in, and I have to call the post office and have the package held. And the pods have always made it okay, but it's always seemed like such a production to get the pods. So it was nice to be able to get a pod locally because I've done some videos in the past of this and I had told them I wanted to update and bring it up to a better quality, which is what I'm doing today. Um, because the technology wasn't there a few years ago when I was going all over the place doing presentations. So I'm gonna leave you with that video. I wanna say thanks for watching guys. And uh, I hope you'll subscribe because there's going to be a lot more really awesome videos coming. Um, so here you go. And what you're looking at is Theobroma cacao. This is the tree that chocolate comes from. The uh, pods that you see that are hanging on the tree are actually the chocolate pods. And then I don't know how well you can see, but there are tiny white flowers up here that are actually pollinated by midges. Let me see if I can get this to zoom in. There we go. Okay, these are really tiny little flowers. And like I said, they're pollinated by midges. And then the actual cacao pods grow on the uh, trunk of the tree. There's one you can see really, really well. Okay, so I wanted to come back and show you how I actually plant these. Now what I do, I have two pots here that I haven't planted, and then you can see I've put some of the seeds in uh, some of the other pots here. I stick my finger in, and I make a pretty good sized hole. I want to go pretty deep, because these seeds are really pretty good sized. And then I take the seed with the... Uh, root side down like I said here's the root sticking out and I very gently put it in because I don't want to break that off and then I very very gently tap the soil around the edges of that to snug it in 
I'm going to do the same thing with this seat here. Again, we have a small root protruding out right there. So I'm very gentle at this point because the last thing I want to do is accidentally break a root off. And then to finish these off, to keep that seed from drying out, I use a little bit of horticultural vermiculite. And I just go along and I put a very light layer on the top. Okay. Just really enough to cover this seed up and give the soil a thin layer on top. Okay. And you can see how dry these peat pots are right now at this moment. That is okay. You would never want them dry like this when you were actually trying to germinate or grow anything because it would kill the plant. But because I'm just planting this and my soil is moist, I'm okay. Now what I'm going to do when I get this completely covered here and I move this into the greenhouse, which is where it's going to germinate, um, I'm going to fill this up completely to the top of this tray with hot water. The hot water is not going to hurt the plants, but it is going to cause the peat pots to quickly absorb it. Now, when I say hot water, I'm not talking about boiling hot. I'm just talking about tap water hot. And so this is what, and this vermiculite, I mean, you can spread it with your fingers, but it will, uh, expand and smooth out once water hits it as well and you want to check and make sure that your soil has not shrunk enough and your vermiculite hasn't shrunk and you don't have a piece of the seed showing up above the soil because you don't want that if you do add a little more vermiculite um it won't take long before you you will start seeing the growth of the theobroma trees above the soil line and uh so you just keep an eye and like i said flood drain flood drain so you just be a little more careful with the peat pots than what you would if you were using an actual plastic pot thanks for watching guys i hope you will subscribe thumbs up thumbs down if you have any questions or comments leave them below in the comments section i'm always happy to hear from my readers and if there's anything i can answer about chocolate for you please leave it below um if i don't know the answer i do know quite a few people that i can get in contact with to try to find that answer out for you i do not have any original chocolate recipes those are highly guarded as you probably know and when i get around to making my own i will be creating my very own recipe thanks guys have a great night